Hey guys, it's Core Ross and Wild Rainbow Six News Roundup. So we'll round up all the Rainbow Six news over the last week or so. So let's start with the missing April Fools event. Of course, we had an amazing April Fools last year with Rainbow's Magic. It was absolutely brilliant, so well done. But this year there was no event on April Fools, which is a pity, but I would have loved to have seen either the same one again from last year or a brand new one. Now we know from data mining that the next event is going to be gangster style, so it would have been a bit of an odd for it to start up on April 1st, although you know, I bet a lot of people were just sitting there on April 1st hoping an event was going to show up. But Ubisoft on April 3rd released this picture on Twitter saying that in every house is a rainbow. Now this is probably an actual picture from the house rework which has basically a homage to the Rainbow's Magic event from last year. In the rework of House, of course, we're going to be getting that as the reworked map in Season 2. So it's nice to see a little tease of the next house map, but of course all of us are just waiting for the next event to start up. I'm guessing it will probably be this month, but that is a guess. It could be later for all we know. But I would love to see it this month, even within the next week or so, would be sweet. Although from the data mining, it does look like a different take on the events, which I'm kind of interested in seeing. And also be expecting paid packs to go alongside the event as well. Now talking of cosmetics, let's move on to mozzarella mozzie. So this guy is now available and you can pick him up, try and get him before he runs out. And uh, the way I got him is with no money, I went and got my Amazon Prime trial, which then gives you Twitch Prime. So I went and I redeemed them and then I canceled my Amazon Prime. So I now have the skin without having to, have to spend any money, which is always awesome. And yeah, holy crap, it's a bit over the top, but it is pretty, I, I gotta say I like it, even though it's stupid as hell. I love the fact it's animated and when he moves and stuff and the eyes bubble around, it's really, really good. And then onto more serious things, we got the kind of uh, balance and patch notes slash explanations thing that the developers like to do on the developer blog, which gave us the balancing graph. So we got to see the attackers, the defenders, the ban rates and all that as well. And these are always super fascinating to me. Of course, they're just pictures with very simple graphics, but the data behind them is really just, like I say, fascinating to me. So I like having to, like having to see where the operators are, how they're moving around, what's changing, what's the new meta in the game, how things are playing out. And then of course, the developers are actually giving their reasoning for why they're doing some of the changes. And it's always interesting because like, they're taking away Goyu's shield, so he's going to be coming down to two now instead of three. But they're not doing that because of the player base. The player base are terrible with them. These graphs are from Platinum and Diamond and Champion. And those players are playing Goyu terribly. But on the pro side of things, the pros are using Goyu amazingly, which is a big issue. And I wonder how they're going to change Goyu because I don't think this, I think this is a, a band-aid right now for Goyu. I feel like in the future, they might have to take his shields and just make them look different from a normal deployable shield. So that there's more idea that this isn't just a normal shield that's perfectly safe. This is a shield that could explode and potentially kill you. So I think they may have to do something like that. Or they may have to just rework him or tweak him in a way that makes him not so OP for pros. But it's actually better for the average player. So I'm curious to see what they'll do, but it might be a while till we actually see anything like that come out. And then of course we got our reasoning for why they're changing Jaeger to a two speed, which I don't think is a bad thing. I don't think it's going to make his win rate go down. I think either it'll stay the same or maybe even go up a little bit. But I do think we'll see maybe 20% of those people move and actually start playing someone else. But am I right? Is that going to be the case? Is it going to be that Jaeger is going to be still up there 90% and above in the next one? And they're going to have to do more or have they maybe just found the perfect thing which turned enough people off to bring his pick rate down. We'll have to wait and see, of course. And then I'm really concerned about Ying because I think a lot of people and myself are a bit worried if she might become quite OP. But the thing is with Ying, she's difficult to play. You have to play her right. You have to be in the right mindset. You have to be playing her correctly in order to pull off the kills that you can get because her gadget is still quite inconsistent it's still got a bit of issues but if used correctly oh my god can it be very very powerful but anyway guys i'm not going to bore you anymore with my ramblings i hope you guys are having a good time i hope you're going to play lots of games if you are currently stuck in a stay-at-home period like i am right now and i hope that things get better in the next few months or at least in the next six months
And if you're looking for more information on these changes that have been made to the game, I recommend going and checking out Rogue9's video on all the changes that have been done. He goes in depth on all this stuff and it's very, very well done. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.